If the Philadelphia Eagles stay put at the 22nd overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, who are their top options? We're going to get into that and some day two prospects as well on this Friday edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast. You are Locked On Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Eagles fans? Welcome on in. I'm Louis DiBiase, co-host of the Locked On Eagles podcast. You can find my work also over at Bleacher Report. Same with Gino Camilleri, my co-host and our scouting director. On today's edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast, we're going to get into prospect versus prospect talk. If the Eagles stay put at the 22nd overall pick, what are our preferences in certain scenarios, we're going to do that same thing with their second round picks as well. And then get into, since we're trying to get back to that 2022 success, how do we think the roster looks on paper compared to that team? We thank you so much for making Lockdown Eagles your first listen each and every day. And, you know, Gino, when you look at it again, I think this is the, we've been talking a lot about scenarios lately, what's to come for day one, because with Howie Roseman, as we've said a million times, he's so prone to trade up. He's so prone to trade down like he very rarely stays put. But that is a scenario that, you know, last year he stayed put and took Nolan Smith. In 2020, he did stay put and take Jalen Rager. So I think it's definitely something to explore. There's also going to be a lot of smoke going on right now in reports. So just yeah, be cautious with what you right read. Now, man. And there was a report today from Matt Miller of ESPN that the Philadelphia Eagles could potentially be in talks with Seattle to be a dark horse team to go and move up to that 16 spot potentially. At the same time, you hear things like Jackson Powers Johnson all of a sudden isn't like a, a top interior offensive lineman in the draft. And you hear all of that's these a team that things. loves him trying to get him to fall. Yes. To like 27. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> take everything you hear with a grain of salt besides Howie Roseman and the fact that he trades up or down because that is actually factual and that's probably yes. what is going to happen and i've said it a couple times but i'm gonna say it again so right where the eagles are at mm -hmm. 22 is such a difficult territory to i be agree in. yeah because when you're in a personnel department you'll hear teams two three years down the road when you revisit these draft classes how many quote unquote first round grades they had on these players there's 32 picks in the first round but there's not 32 guys that teams grade out as worthy of being a first round player. It usually mm -hmm. falls anywhere between 16 to 20 guys. It could be more, it could be less. Depends on the draft. If it's like 2013, where there's like seven guys that you could take and the rest are second round picks after that. And there's some all star type of classes where the Eagles make out and they get lucky and they turn around and they grab. Jalen Carter, and then they turn around and grab Nolan Smith, two guys who probably were first round grades on their board. But being at 22, getting to sum all this up, if you have 17 guys with first round grades, let's say, right. and you're at pick 15, and you only have two of those guys left, that's when the phones start heating up. But there was a tweet today, Lou, that I want to pull up, and I'm going to grab it here on my phone. It was from Jim Nagy, and it was talking about if the first round played out exactly like this in terms of how many picks were to be taken. So it boiled down to, and I, excuse me, I should have had this pulled up folks. This is bad podcasting all in all. Okay. So Matt Miller tweeted, he said four to five quarterbacks, seven to eight wide receivers, eight to nine offensive linemen, 20 of the 32 picks in the first round will likely come from those positions. Then Jim Nagy quote tweeted and said, Jim's that don't have, Teams that don't have glaring needs at those three spots are feeling good about some studs at other positions being pushed down. Howie Roseman, number 22, and Brad Holmes, number 29. Gotta love how this first round will likely unfold. That's interesting. That's a good way to think of it, actually, because, Gino, I was going to say, you're so right. It, after you get to pick 20, it feels like if you do pick for need, let's say, you don't really feel like, even if you get a guy at that position, that you're like, okay, we're set now, right? There's a lot more questions it is closer to a second round pick. The grades are a lot closer there, but this draft, because it's going to be so quarterback heavy receiver and like a few, just a few positions like offensive tackle as well. Mm -hmm. it, it actually might be a year where you do want to stay put because there might be a few steals that you didn't expect to fall down the board. 
I mean, let's just simply do the math from that equation right there. You say four to five quarterbacks, seven to eight wide receivers. Let's just play it safe. Yeah. You add that number together. Let's take five quarterbacks because more than likely there will be five. I, I would expect six, to be honest with you. Let's play it safe with five. You take seven wide receivers. That's 12 players already right there. You say eight to nine offensive linemen. What if the Eagles' plan isn't to take an offensive lineman and it's to take the best defensive player right. at whatever position is on the board? Because that's what it's going to come down to, Lou. This truly is the Eagles could potentially have, let's say, five or six defensive players with first-round grades. But how many teams are going to overdraft and over-target offense? I think Maybe that's why Howie Roseman is going all in. And Jim Nagy, to say that... He's not somebody that is just a random quote unquote internet scout. This guy is the director of the senior bowl. Like he is plugged in. I'm sure there are discussions that he has heard that the Eagles could potentially love. Mm. Let's say one of these cornerbacks, let's say one of the defensive linemen, let's say a linebacker that could be the best case scenario for the Eagles Lou. And on the other end of it, what if none of these defensive players have those first round grades and that first round does play out like Matt Miller and Jim Nagy are saying, that's when the Eagles get into panic mode and then they go and trade up and not panic mode, I would say, but more on the edge of their seat to, for Howie Roseman to kind of lean forward and say, it's time to go and get my guy. Like I got to yeah. go up and get my Jordan Davis by giving up a three or a four and get my Jalen Carter and get my Devonte Smith. I'm going to do that. So I'm not taking a second round graded player right. in the first round, which going back to Marcus Smith, Many teams had that kid graded out as a third round type of player. Talk about an overdraft. That's the scenario you get into when you're drafting right around that 20 to 25 area. Yeah, it's a tough spot to be in, but this might be the year that you do like to stay put. Who knows? Because, you know, even if it goes offense heavy in the top 10, top like 12 to 15 picks, there's a lot of teams, though, in that 15 to 20 range that need some defensive help. So I think you're going to see. Definitely a few edge rushers go a couple defensive linemen on the interior. Right. Probably Howie a, isn't the only one that no, knows that this is right, going to exactly. probably like, see how it plays out. At least two of those corners are not going to be in range, like inside the, or I should say outside of the top 20, like maybe Nate Wiggins falls, but like, I can't imagine there's a scenario where Quinion Mitchell's on the board or uh, Terry and Arnold. So I do think it's still worth exploring these other prospects. It also takes two to tango, Gino. Some teams just might not want to trade up for one of these players. Cause like you're saying, if the grades are that close, how he might not be able to find a partner. So coming up next right here on Locked on Eagles, I want to do a prospect versus prospect exercise for potential options at 22. Also in the second round as well. So we'll get into that coming up next right here on the Locked on Eagles podcast. As we roll on this episode of LOE is brought to you by our friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The winning formula for winners, yeah. championships, and it is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Sur superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, yeah. you'll always find exactly what what you need and with ebay's guaranteed fit your part is guaranteed to fit your ride or die every single time or your money back because ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash with all the parts you need and the prices you want it's easy to make your car the mvp bring home huge wins keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply ebay guaranteed fit only available for u.s customers All right, Eagles fans, we thank you so much for making Lockdown Eagles your first listen each and every day. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on TV all day? Got to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make sure to make the switch to Lockdown Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all that screaming. Lockdown Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team. Every day. So, Gino, today we're talking that 22nd overall pick. We're exploring options. If Howie Roseman does not, like, let's say the board does not fall his way and he can't go up for one of those corners or one of his few offensive tackles he wants to trade up for is not available and there's not a partner to trade down because, as you mentioned, once it gets to, like, pick 20 and back, 
the the grading does kind of get a lot closer than it does inside that top 15 where there's a clear separation in talent from these prospects. So there might be a scenario where they have to pick at 22. So I, I drew up some prospect versus prospect scenarios for you, and I want to get your thoughts. If they're sitting at pick 22, which prospect would you prefer in these scenarios? So I want to start at the cornerback position where in this scenario, Terry and Arnold's gone. So is Nate Wiggins. So is Quinya Mitchell. You've got Cooper DeGene from Iowa or Kool-Aid McKinstry from Alabama. Who would you prefer in that scenario? Ooh. So like CB4, CB5, and it's all rankings vary with those two, it feels like. The thing about DeGene is you're most likely probably going to see him play a similar role to what Chauncey Garner-Johnson plays, in my opinion, where he's a pseudo coverage type of safety. Yeah, I don't know what he's going to be at the next level, honestly. He's going to be a good football player. That's for sure. Yeah, like he's a, he's a heck that's of an athlete. You can put him on the field. And for a Fanjo style of defense, man, we haven't talked about the potential to have a, a chess piece in Cooper DeGene where mm. McKinstry, you're really banking on. He's going to be the next guy up at the outside corner right. for your future. That's a tough decision. That's that's what they talk you're about. Right. I guess it depends group, on the right? role, right? It's like what you're looking for in that corner. And if you don't believe DeGene can be a, a full-time boundary guy, and he's just a Swiss Army knife that does all the other things really well, slot corner, safety, moving around the formation, that might change your mind. And at the same time, do we not already have guys like that in Reed Blankenship and Chauncey right. and who we brought Sydney in and Brown. Sidney Brown, who from his mouth verbatim said that he should be ready for the season this Sound year as of yeah. today. So I like the McKinstry idea because, I one, I think the discussion between him and Terry and Arnold, when there's two prospects from the same school, it almost kind of feels like they're never on the same level with each other. When it, the discussion in the media is like one always has to be better sure. than the other. When I think these guys are like really, really close to each other, almost like the Alabama wide receivers a couple of years ago with Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddle. Like it was a lot closer than people made it out to be where most of the time everybody's like, oh, Devontae Smith's going to be the first guy, the first guy. And then all of a sudden Miami pulls the trigger and the discussion was they wanted Jalen Waddle. It could be like that, Lou, where maybe this team has Xavier graded out higher than Terry, Ar- Terry and Arnold. I think it would sure. be crazy with Terry and his age I and agree. his upside and his character. Like he's, he's for sure going to be a number one guy, but at 22, if you're going to say what I want for a cornerback, I think the McKinstry pick would make the most sense for what you don't have in the cover. You're going to stock him in there and you could potentially already have with Ringo and him, maybe your future two outside corners potentially. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Like, I think DeGene has some advantages over McKinstry. I think he has better ball skills. Like, he has very natural hands. It almost oh, looks dude, like yeah, a time. He's a great playmaker. Yeah, he's sure. catching like a receiver. I mean, his body control is unreal. He's way more versatile. He's a great tackler. Like, he's aggressive. But for me, again, I'm not looking for that Swiss Army knife. I feel like this defense has those options, as you alluded to. I'm looking for that boundary option in the future to replace James Bradbury if Keely Ringo's not that guy. And even if he is, Darius Slay's probably only going to be here for one more year. And McKinstry just, I don't know, he's a more fluid athlete in short area. I think he's more mm-hmm. explosive. Like, DeGene has good long-range speed, but... I don't know, stiffer hips, like when he's playing press against like an elite route runner, I'm a little more concerned with him than I would McKinstry. McKinstry was a guy at Alabama that, like his teammate on the other side, Terry and Arnold, that team was very comfortable putting him on an island, and I love that. I want an island guy at corner. You want the island boys at corner. Island boys. Or at <laughs> yeah. least a guy that I know if I put him on an island, he's going to survive. No, you know? I totally get it. I'm, I'm with you. I think we're in agreement here. Yeah. And, and you can make, they're both good football players. Like, it's it's yeah. not. DeGene's a very high floor player. Yeah. Like, I if, just, you, if you draft him, he's going to be a legit playmaker. If we don't sign Chauncey Gardner Johnson a right. month ago, like, Cooper DeGene is, yep. in my opinion, a clear and away favorite to he's be day the, one the number 22 pick, in my opinion. Like, you sit there and you let all those offensive guys go. Heck, if Cooper DeGene is there at 22, you take him. But in this scenario, mm-hmm. it isn't like you have a bare bones covered like last year and Justin Evans is your next man up. Like, no, you're you're kind of set right. in the middle of that secondary when it comes to the coverage element, when it comes to tackling. Now it's those guys that can play outside of the numbers that are going to have to keep up with the X and Z receivers of today's age. All right, let's go to the edge position here, Gino, which we explored in our last mock draft. We took Darius Robinson from Missouri now that Hassan Reddick has been traded. 
you know, the future at the edge is up in the air. It could be set. It might not be. Who knows? So I drew this one up for pick 22. Chop Robinson from Penn State or UCLA edge rusher Lietu Latu? I like Latu more than you do. Yeah, this one I thought we were going to disagree on. I think it's a I very like... floor versus ceiling conversation, probably. <laughs> Damn, or am man. I being am I being too hard no, on Latu? No, I'm just no, nervous no. about the neck, man. The the injury thing is a big you're, thing. You're you just kind of said it, and I I had this weird thought in my head, and I hate player comps, but okay. the more I thought about okay. Latu, I'm like, is he just AJ Epinesa, like a lighter AJ Epinesa? It's funny you say that. I got that kind of vibe or like a Derek too. Barnett, where like you mm-hmm. said it, like is the floor what it is like you're gonna get a really good player for probably sometimes that's bit me seven though, to eight years like that. Like that that's could, that yeah, could be that's a, BG a reason that... player that you need to replace that role, right? Sure. Like, you can make the argument that Chop has a way higher upside, and that's why I like Robinson. But Latu, I think, is going to be the better player from the jump. You need you know, somebody this... to defend the run on the edge, though. Like, I, I yeah. trust Latu to do that a little bit more right now. But it's it's projection, and the, the these are the reasons why, folks when the Milton Williams pick happens and Howie Roseman goes to shake Tom Donahoe's hand and Tom Donahoe doesn't shake his hand is because there were disagreements in the war room like this. Like, Oh, you Mm want to make that pick because you think he has a higher floor. Well, Oh, I think he has a higher ceiling. This is what they do each and every day. So these discussions are a hundred percent valid. And if I had to say it right now, with the way that the world is working at the edge position, and, and what the Eagles you, like, man, like what they've been adding. I think Chop is like that kind of fastball style they like. Somebody's either going to, you're either going to extend him for sure, or somebody's going to pay him a boatload of money because they still believe in what he, like, could he be a Bryce Huff type of guy who comes on like the last couple yeah. of years of his rookie deal and he really kind of breaks out. It's two but, similar debates with DeGene versus McKinstry and Latu mm-hmm. versus Robinson. It's again, do you want to roll? And but I will say, Gino, sometimes it's bitten me when I have passed on the floor or the pro, the quote unquote safe prospect because a lot of times those are just really good football players, and I swing out. I don't think it's always a bad thing to. I think we just hype up upside so much, especially in the modern day quarterback era, with that being the approach for most teams. Like that's what you want. But I think sometimes you can get tunnel vision with that, and you just miss on. Like a safe player isn't always a bad thing, but Latu, I don't know if it's safe because the like the style and the talent is safe, but the yeah. medicals are not. Yeah, the medicals are definitely not safe, and I don't know how the Eagles will look at it because they're one of the teams you look into Kobe Dean that is more willing. I mean, Sidney Jones to take a sure. risk on that type of player, but fair point. Josh Sweat even coming out of Florida State, a couple years questions. removed from that Nicobe Dean type of in, uh, injury, does that make you think twice? But at yeah. the same time. One of our listeners, I wish I had their name, pointed out, hey, Landon Dickerson, he was injury prone as well. And look what happens to him, man. I mean, he doesn't play entirely his basically entire senior year down at Alabama. And he comes to Philadelphia and he just got $20 million a year. So right. give me chop. Give me chop. I'll take right. chop. In that we agree scenario. again. Yeah. Here's an interesting one for you. Let's go luxury pick. Xavier Worthy, the receiver from Texas or Georgia tight end Brock Bowers? Oh, I think this is easy, Brock Bowers. I don't even think this is a discussion, yeah. to, to be honest with you. The heart for me is telling me worthy. The head saying Bowers. Bowers makes more sense long term and probably in the short term, so you can use 12 personnel. But again, you know, I'm so, I've said on the show before, I would be so enticed to see worthy in this offense, in the slot, as that like fourth or fifth guy. I just think it would be such an unreal element to have like a 4 2 player on this offense. Well, he doesn't wear a Georgia helmet, so I mean that's an yeah. automatic check again. That's fair. I think Howie would, even <laughs> yeah, though I'd probably go sure. Worthy, Howie's probably going Brock Bowers. Let's go to a, a more realistic one here for offensive tackle if they don't trade up: Tyler Guyton or Marius Mims. I gotta say this real quick. Sure, Chad Reuter, NFL Network. He put out a mock draft before the show came out. You know, want to know what the Eagles did in that mock draft, Lou? Did they take a lineman, a center? They, tra- they traded up to 16 to draft Graham Barton out of Duke. That would be a great reaction for our live show because I will probably break my <laughs> Lou, If you want to see Lou DiBiase give up his radio career, it would probably if happen they in that moment If they trade up for an interior. And look, Graham Barton's somebody that I think can play every position on the offensive line. He is such an 16 athlete. 16 is rich, though, man. That's At 22, rich. I'd be upset, but I'd be like, okay, I, I guess I can like find a way to get behind it. 
although it would take me a while. If they trade up six spots to get not even – it's it's got to be – I would already be a little annoyed if it's offensive line. If it's not tackle, yeah, that would be a fun reaction for sure, but not in the way that we're used to the last few years when we just think the Eagles are crushing it. So be like the soldier boy, Drake. Drake. <laughs> yeah. Graham. Graham. But um, no, I back to the back to the point. Armarius Mims is one of those two very raw prospects, but just yes, so much skill. Incredibly raw. Tyler Guyton getting back to the injury thing too. Like, yeah. are, are we gonna have that discussion with all of these prospects at the same time? Mims is one of those guys that just screams Jeff Stoutland, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And the length we is t- unreal. Remember the Titus Howard conversation we had a couple years ago? It's like yep. you could kind of think about Armarius Mims in that same light. Where it's, and Howard like, ended up being the better pick than Andre Dillard, crazy enough. Dude, funny enough, Houston, they would have loved to be able to get him. But the Eagles traded right Titus, in front of them to get Dillard, and Howard was the better player. It kind of was a panic pick for them, and yeah. hopefully that's not the situation that the Eagles get into. But I'm going to throw one out. I would take J.C. Latham over both of them. Ooh, okay. I like that from Alabama. I think he's a, a safer pick, but at the same time, I think he still has like high starter level. Better upside. chance of playing guard too compared to these yep. two are not right used away. to that. If you don't believe in Tyler Steen to play at that spot and you want him mm-hmm. to be more of your primary yeah, you know back Bama and tackle. guys are versatile. Stalin yeah. has the relationship with, with Nick Saban and you know how that goes. And I, w- I wouldn't be all too shocked if, if that would yeah. be something that could potentially be uh, on the board where we're sitting there and it's like, yeah, Lou, we, we should have seen this yeah. one coming, right? <laughs> I think Guyton would be the pick between those two. I think Latham might make more sense, and I think he is a safer bet. Um, Guyton, of course, you got the Oklahoma thing with mm-hmm. he's been, you know, Lane Johnson's been a mentor to him. The athleticism is just so enticing. Another guy that hasn't played the position very long, which the Eagles like to invest in. He actually played defensive end in high school before going to Oklahoma. So lethal first step. The injuries are there, but as you mentioned, the Eagles have been prone in the past to take chances on some of those guys especially when they're not picking in the top 15 to potentially get a better prospect compared to what you normally would get at that spot. We're going to set aside the uh, 2024 versus 2022 talk. I want to continue this exercise. Gina, we got some day two options I want to get into. And uh, there's, I want to keep this going. So we'll get into it coming up next right here. I'm locked on Eagles. Today's episode of the Lockdown Eagles podcast, we are brought to you today by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on a 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees do apply. And now for some legal information. Claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing in Involves risk, including loss. Limitations do apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% match on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker-dealer. All right, Gina, let's keep this going. Prospect versus prospect. We were really diving deep into some options potentially for that 22nd overall pick. But I think, honestly, where we have varied the most like when we do Mock Draft Monday is with that 50th overall selection and that 53rd pick. The good thing with the second round compared to the first is you do have options. It might not have to be this guy or this guy because not only do you have two picks, but they're so close together. But I do want to get into this exercise anyway because you're not guaranteed to get both these guys in that second round. And I want to start here at corner again, as we did in segment one. And this one, I think, on or segment two, I should say, this one I think we're going to agree on. Uh, Ennis Rakestraw from Missouri or Kyrie Jackson from Oregon. Oh, that's not even a conversation. Is it Jackson for you too? All right, there's somebody. Because he's not getting enough hype, I think, is like a second round. I, I'm seeing so many mocks where it's third, fourth round. I'm like... He has so much more upside than a rake straw or so many other corners that are being brought up. There's somebody from a certain site that has three letters and they happen to be PFN. And I hope said person happens to be listening to this because it was by far not just the most unintelligible, but the dumbest thing I've ever heard about Kyrie Jackson. Yeah, He's about to be 
25 come opening day. Yeah, it happens. That's why he's going to fall into the second round, right? Yeah. Said individual said that he is, quote, the Brandon Whedon of cornerbacks. That's insane. the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Stop. Just stop. You should probably look into something else for your career, if we're being honest. But no, it's Kyrie Jackson. You talk about if he's two years younger, three years younger, you're in the Christian Gonzalez type of territory when it comes to potentially a first round pick hype. Rake straw, it makes a lot of sense. Personally, I love the idea of adding Kyrie. Rake straw is much younger. Yeah, Kyrie he's Jackson. a dog, man. Like, I like Rake Straw. He's aggressive. He's another dude that you can trust and press man on an island, but he just does not – the gifts of Kyrie Jackson are just Scenario, so enticing. Like James Bradbury isn't here. I, I trust Kyrie Jackson and or Keely Ringo to be my number two yeah. right away. Right away. And well, and the Rake age, Straw that helps you, know, honestly. For, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. he's, he's going to have to come in and play. Like, that's the thing. He's not so, going to sit around on the bench. So I mentioned this the other day, actually talking about Kyrie Jackson, and this is a great tweet from Jim Nagy, the uh, senior bowl director. A trusted source told him that Kyrie was the most talented guy in their defensive back room when he was at Alabama. And that room had Brian Branch, Terry and Arnold, Kool-Aid McKinstry, Jordan Battle, Eli Ricks, who we're all familiar with, DeMarco Halams, and then Malachi Moore. Like that's a loaded group. And a source from Alabama said Jackson was the most talented guy. Again, like that's why I liked Reek Wollen. It's why I liked Keely Ringo last year. Give me the guy with length that has size, that has that speed. Give me that ball of clay and let me mold it. And this guy is not, like you said, 21 where you know, the age, it's not ideal to have a 25-year-old rookie, but it actually might help for the Eagles who have an immediate need at corner. That's the thing. If you're going to draft him, he's going to have to come in. Yeah, and Ringo's super young, so it's not like you don't have young options. Right, and you look back at some older guys, like let's say Velas Jones, for example, who was drafted by Chicago. I think he was just not drafted into a good situation. He also just wasn't that talented of a player. Like Jackson has some... Kyrie Jackson can play ball, man. As you mentioned, if he's three years younger, he's probably a first-round pick over a McKinstry or a DeGene. Oh, yeah, you're talking about... Look at... Just turn on the two games of Washington. Like, that's all you need to do. Like, he's covering those guys. Yeah, he might get burned a couple times, but his number one objective was to cover Roma Dunze. That's not an easy assignment at all. And you made a great point. Like, you have youth in that room as well. Yeah. Do I think it's more likely they go outside corner or nickel corner with that type of selection? Ooh, I let me throw a different one at you. Kyrie you Jackson go. or Max Melton? Max Melton. Easy, far and away. Age athleticism, yeah. versatility. I think I'm with you here, too. Got Although I want the boundary Kyrie guy, like them. Melton's the better player. Dude, he's a crazy athlete. They really need guys who can run at that position, and he's played in the Big Ten. He played at Rutgers, man. He's not going against some G5-level type of wide receivers. Right. Like He would be a guy that this Eagles team has been reported to send a lot of individuals to his pro day to talk with him, and – that could be a pick with, like you said, 50 and or 53, where it's almost like the J.J. and Miles Sanders draft, unfortunately, mm. where they got their two guys, but one didn't work out. Hopefully, at least one does work out, but let's hope you get two really good football players. But if it came to corner, I bet Max Melton is a favorite of this team. I think they want to get that nickel cornerback position figured out. Mm. But at the same time, don't discount them from taking a guy like and it's rake straw because of that upside or Kyrie Jackson, if they have that immediate need. All right, Gino, I got a linebacker one for you and I'm going to throw three players in here. So we've got Peyton Wilson from NC state, Jeremiah Trotter jr. From Clemson, who of course is a fan favorite because of his dad, Cedric gray from UNC. People to just disrespect Cedric gray for, I was about to say Cedric gray is not getting talked about enough. I think he's better than Jeremiah Trotter. Oh, I know he a, doesn't have the name in Philly, but yeah. Gray's a better player. Jeremiah Trotter's like definitely not the best player of those three. Not he's probably no. number three. Peyton out of Wilson probably players. has the most talent, but then we can get back into we medicals. Get back into the him. medicals. Yeah, for the Eagles, he's, I want something safe, man. They they're already going linebacker risky. with at Dean linebacker. and Ben White. Like it's already risky with injuries, performance, but they have upside. Give me the. I think Gray's just going to be a stud from like just a very reliable player from day one. If you're taking Peyton Wilson, in my opinion, you're hoping that one of him or yeah. N'Kobe Dean works out. Law of averages, like you gamble on three of them, at least one's going to hit, you'd hope. We can't 
not look at what just happened in Dallas with Leighton Van Der Esch, man. We had heard for years about his neck injury, and look at he could have played at his level if he's healthy for how long? Yeah. And he that's had why to I hang it up early. So safety and or upside, that's what these discussions are. If it would, I'd probably say it's somebody outside of that group, but I would take Tedrick Gray in my opinion. Jeremiah Trotter, I think with Gray, again, does he have the upside of a Peyton Wilson? Probably not as much, but I don't think he's a player that you can't trust on all three downs. Like I think you can. With Jeremiah Trotter, I don't know, man. I just I don't want to say he's a two-down player, but compared to some of these other prospects, he might be. And Peyton Wilson has the most upside to like be your true green dot, like yeah. lead the way of that defense. Be, is Cedric Gray going to be a true number one backer who's – no, coming in there. And just I'm, co- I'm coming from being an the only guy in the field. Like, yeah, just give me a someone I know that you. if the other options don't work out, like you got one Somebody safe. Somebody I know. Yeah, and Davian Taylor is a big one that sits in the back of my mind. That's like, man, sure. they, they tried this. They tried the mm-hmm. the high upside on somebody, and it's yeah. like maybe you just you need to take that safe player at linebacker sometimes. For sure. Sometimes you just got to keep it simple, and that's why the Eagles have been really good at drafting over the last few years. Let us know what you think with these prospect versus prospect debates. We'll be on Twitter talking about them at LockdownBirds, at GC24 underscore football, and at DBLCLOE. We thank you so much for making Lockdown Eagles your first listen each and every day. That's going to do it for this Friday episode. We will be back for Mock Draft Monday in just a few days. Mock versus Mock. Gino and I will both be doing separate seven-round mock drafts, and we want to see who you like more in those mocks. For Gino Camilleri, until then, I'm Louis DiBiase signing off. As always, thank you for downloading, watching, and listening, and let's go, Birds. Fly, Eagles, fly.